Hello, everyone, and welcome to the premiere night of Cori Spezzati 360. I'm here this evening to just tell you a little bit about how the program came about and to introduce you to Scott Reimer. Hi, Scott. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good, thanks. It's great to see you. Uh, even Thank if we're you. still on screens, you and I, this experience was actually the first time Canzona was in a room all together. What was that like? It was incredible. It's actually been so long since we've been able to sing together, period. And uh, to do it in the same room was just a fantastic experience. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so, so glad that everybody had that special experience of singing in the same room. And I can't imagine a better space to have done that in than the Millennium Center in downtown Winnipeg. Tell me a little bit about that building and, and what it was like to sing this music there. Yeah, it's gorgeous in there. They have, it's, it's all um, marble and just a beautiful hard surfaces. Acoust the acoustic is amazing in there long um, um, uh, reverb time, probably four second decay or so. And so you make a sound and it just blossoms and it lasts forever seemingly. And so you put together 16 voices of Canzona together in a room together and sing some amazing, you know, Baroque music. And it just is, it was magical. It was really, really terrific after such a long time of missing singing together in a room. Mm hmm. I can tell from the video I have seen the whole concert, uh, even though I'm not there. I've been producing it behind the scenes and working on it all week. And I'm so excited to share it with our audience tonight. You really get that sense of of the of the space of the reverb. Uh, there's no added reverb for those of you watching at home. All of the, the sound effect that you hear in the recording is totally natural, organic sound from this from this incredible space and from these incredible singers that we were so lucky to have on this project. Scott, um, what was the process like just from start to finish in terms of putting this together and how is it different from a normal concert? Ooh, interesting question because there were so many guidelines that we had to make sure we were dotting our T's and crossing our I's or whatever the saying is. <laughs> um, to make sure everything was in order and we were being safe. And so following COVID protocols with masks, with, um, you know, checking people uh, at the door, make sure everyone's um, healthy and not contracting the virus and passing it on, uh, all the while trying to make art together. It was such a convoluted process at times, um, but so worth it in the end. Um, we started with rehearsals in, in our regular rehearsal venue, um, had a couple of rehearsals together and then finally got into the venue and, and thanks to, you know, some rapid testing, we were able to actually remove masks as you'll see in the video and sing together without masks on, which was <laughs> unbelievable. Um, just to sing in a room together would have been amazing. And it was amazing uh, during rehearsal, but to take the masks off and then actually see each other's faces and mouths while we sang together it was yeah it was fantastic amazing yeah it's been such a a wild ugh, year and a half more now and choirs have had some of the hardest times you know of all the industries that have been affected i think choral music is is one of the most deeply impacted because literally what we do is is breathe together in a room in close proximity and and that has been one of the most dangerous things to do so i'm so glad to see that there are processes in place and ways now that we can move forward safely uh, and making sure that everybody's comfortable along the way uh, and, and get back to making music together it's worth it i think we've never appreciated it more yeah well and up until the past year and a half the science community hasn't had such need to do certain research projects that they've been doing over the past uh year or so and so we have a lot more information that we didn't have until recently um so to have that information at our fingertips and be able to do things uh with confidence in a safe way is such an important step for for collective music making yeah Wonderful. And what about the rest of the process, you know, leaving COVID aside for a moment? 
um, in terms of preparing to record and the kind of stamina that's needed in the rehearsal process and recording and then filming and and what does that what does that feel like? Yeah, you know that's a very interesting question. Um, to have two and a half hour rehearsals, give or take, um, you know, with some breaks in there, but after a year to eighteen months of almost no singing for many of these people some of whom maybe are involved with little singing things here and there but for the most part these people are somewhat out of shape and what makes them professionals in this manner is the fact that they can just whip themselves into shape so quickly and prepare um in such an effective manner that when we come together it only took a few rehearsals together for us to start to really start to gel and and feel like we were you know, back pre-pandemic conditions, vocally speaking. So um, I, it was it was very interesting tackling some of the old things that we try to do in a choral setting, like t intonation and mm -hmm. tone production, and just being able to sing certain lines without having to take a breath in between, like I just did mm -hmm. in this long sentence. <laughs> um, but you know, also the extra little um, aspects that are were involved along the way. So. Yeah, yeah, so very interesting people. process. Yeah, I was talking to one of the singers. He said they, they, uh, you know, they are a very studious and committed singer, and they always uh, practice. But it took a different form this time. You know, you have to be really careful to warm up your voice before each practice session to prepare yourself for the rehearsal. So it's kind of taking all the the uh, the layers off of our process that we may have taken for granted for years and years as as you know seasoned professional musicians um, is sort of going back to basics and figuring out oh where is the voice today what do I need to do to sing through this entire program of really difficult music there's also a lot of Renaissance music on this program which Kenzona doesn't always do um, it is certainly informing this program which is all about the uh, poly choral tradition started in St. Mark's in Venice, um, was championed by composers there like Gabrielli and Monteverdi. Then people like Schutz and Hassler went there from the German speaking part of Europe and, and studied there and brought that tradition back. And then this program follows that through, through the Baroque, from that early Renaissance, through the Baroque and all the way to Bach, Com Jesu Com, which, which closes this program. We also, for good measure, threw in some, Mont uh, some Mendelssohn, who was, of course, responsible for reviving Bach's music uh, later in the 19th century and chose to compose in this polychoral style as well. So do you think that poses an additional challenge when you have to sing music from 15-something all the way through to 18-something in this program for the singers? It certainly can, and to a certain degree, I suppose, if we had rehearsed in order, um, uh, you know, from Gabrielli all the way to Mendelssohn, uh, and if we had performed in the space in order from Gabrielli to Mendelssohn, um, that may have been quite a challenge. Um, mm. As it was, we were kind of jumping around throughout the sessions um, because we didn't, it wasn't the entire concert, <laughs> spoiler alert, is not one entire concert in one big block. You know, it's it's each song was recorded on its own. And so that allowed us to do songs in whatever order was, was most uh, appropriate mm -hmm. logistically or for the sake of the singers. Um, <clears throat> but that said, yeah, like it's very interesting to have the Gabrielli material and, and the Monteverdi especially mm. that has a lot of like a very different feel than Mendelssohn. The first time we we opened up Mendelssohn and, and sang some of that stuff, I mean, Canzona has spent so much time with Baroque music. I, yes, Mendelssohn is later than Baroque, but it just flies off the page mm -hmm. with such ease for these singers. Um, it's just, yeah, it's very, very um, intuitive yeah. and you get Monteverdi where you know the bar line was kind of a new idea just starting to come in and Monteverdi's feel of the lines and the phrase lengths that he was working with are, are very um very different so mm -hmm. it was a bit of a juggling act to go between the two yeah yeah and vocally I'd imagine sort of mentally to to jump around like that between styles eras and regions 
um, is, is quite a feat. As you mentioned, the program is not in chronological order, and that's on purpose. Um, if, if I was giving a lecture, perhaps I would have put the music in chronological order. But I think we've found a flow that is, I, I feel like my job is totally different in the pandemic because I, I think the flow is like a radio program or like, like a film, which it is, um, maybe rather than, than a choral concert or an educational kind of setting, um, which is where my wheelhouse would have been pre-pandemic. Now I'm a film producer. I'm going to put my resume, <laughs> pop my resume, film yeah. producer yeah. slash conductor. <laughs> um, because just thinking about that experience and thinking about the audience experience is, is very different because tonight when we press play, we're all going to be at home, maybe with our families. Maybe we're having a few people over. My folks are going to come over. We have a fire lit. We're going to project it on the wall. Um, maybe people are having that kind of experience. Maybe they're washing the dishes or folding laundry and they have it on in the background. That's the whole point is that this is able to be with you in your home, wherever you are and however you want to experience that. So we actually start off with the uh, most recent music in the program. We get that Mendelssohn that you were talking about that just flies off the page and because I feel like that piece is like a big hug to our audience. It's like, welcome back. We missed you. Here is something that's just going to wash over you. And then we go into the really early stuff and kind of weave our way back to the Bach, which is the most famous piece on the program and, and arguably the most complex. So, Scott, I think we're out of time. We have to uh, get out of the way so folks can go watch the premiere. We have a couple of ways that you can watch it. Uh, you can go to canzona.ca slash 360, canzona.ca slash 360, or you can visit our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash canzona choir. Our website, uh, when you get there, looks like this, Corey Spezzati 360. This is the slash 360 page. If you just scroll down a little bit, that's us. Right now, the second video you, you see is tonight, and I believe it is seven o'clock. So go to this page, press play. If you go to the YouTube page, there should be a chat over here. So please do say hello. Oh, I'm not sharing that tab, but please do say hello if you go to the YouTube page and tune in and we'll all be chattering while the uh, while the premiere is happening. Thank you so much, Scott. Thanks, Kathleen. Take care. Enjoy. Yeah, I certainly will. <laughs> you too. <laughs>